tonight we are going to make putspot, a staple of Dutch cuisine in the winter. As you can see, uh, it has a bunch of carrots. I got medium-sized carrots, and there are about 10 of them, which I already peeled. Two large potatoes, uh, one lemon. Uh, I'm not going to use a lot of lemon juice, maybe a little bit, but I am using some lemon peel, and it's very important to make sure that the lemon peel does not have any white on it because otherwise it gets bitter. One large onion and then I'm going to spice it up with a little bit of simply black pepper, fresh ground black pepper. I use bay leaf powder in this case because this is going to be a mash and I'm using some vegetarian bouillon mix, mushroom flavor, uh, because that gives it actually sort of like what the Japanese call umami, but it gives it a little bit of a hearty flavor. Some people like to use uh, meat bouillon or um, chicken bouillon um, you can use whatever you want i like vegetarian bouillons because this is actually a vegetarian dish also uh, many dutch people actually put in uh, fried bacon uh, i'm not a fan of bacon uh, so uh, i leave it out um, i'm also adding garlic which in the dutch cuisine they usually don't do um, but uh, uh, what I usually do is fry the garlic first, uh, I'm going to peel it and then I'll show you how to brown the garlic and I add that later on, that is basically in lieu of bacon. So on medium fire, <coughs> I'll show you, I'm putting a fairly large pan, a soup or stock pan, it's a sm actually a half size stock pan and I'm adding a nice bottom of oil. I use extra virgin olive oil. And I don't have to let it get hot. I'm going to fry the garlic. Keep stirring it. And I do that at a low temperature because you don't want the garlic to burn. Burnt garlic starts tasting very uh, bitter. I just want it ever so slightly browned and I'm even going to lower this a little bit. This needs to go slow. It just needs to caramelize and you get a sweet, crispy, nice roasted garlic flavor. So the garlic is nice and fried right now. And I'm uh, going to take it out with a spoon. I'm going to save that for later. And here you see more or less what it needs to look like. So not black, just ever so slightly brown. It takes a moment to get all the garlic out. In the meantime, I've chopped my onion while this was happening. And I've also very finely chopped the lemon rind. I'm also boiling some water in the background to make the bouillon that we're going to add. So I'm going to put this aside. That's for later. Now we're going to add coarsely chopped onions. It really doesn't matter. And we immediately add the lemon rind as well. And we're going to let that, again, on a low flame. We're going to stir it around a little bit. On a low flame, we're going to let this get soft. I'm going to put a lid on this. Now it can get nice and hot on a low flame, because again, the onions we don't want to burn either. And we'll just let this go for a while, for about five to 10 minutes until the onions become glassy. You know that the onions are done. I let them caramelize a little bit when they start to sort of whistle. At this point, they're not really brown, they're just caramelized ever so slightly. 
I'm going to add my potatoes and my carrots, which I have put in small cubes, or cut them in small cubes, everything in at once. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to stir it a little bit so that it's evenly divided over the pan. In the meantime, I made my bouillon, and here I have two cups of bouillon that I'm going to add. And I'm going to close it, let it come to a boil. It's going to take about two minutes. Once it comes to a boil, I turn it completely low and let it simmer with the lid on until everything becomes soft and ready to mash. So the potatoes and the carrots are tender and first going to add my spices. Now traditionally in the Netherlands they only put salt and a little bit of pepper in, maybe even that, and a little bit of uh, uh, bay leaf. Uh, some people also put some clove in there, so I'm actually putting the clove in there, but I like to mix things up. So I'm also going to add, here's pepper, here is ground bay leaf, here is some smoked paprika in flakes from Spain. You can get it at the Trader Joe's or any other kind of store. And then here is some har ras al hanout. Ras al hanout uh, comes from North Africa, uh, especially used in Morocco, in couscous. Um, about a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper, half a teaspoon of uh, bay leaf, half a teaspoon of um, smoked flakes, paprika flakes, um, just a pinch of clove because it's very strong and you don't want to have too much of it because it's really an overpowering spice, and about um, three quarters of a teaspoon of ras al hanout. That goes in there. We're first going to just stir this around and you'll see that the water is pretty much absorbed at this point and it's still moist enough although we may need a little bit more water now at this point uh, when we're going to mash it which i'm going to do right now um, dutch very often put milk and butter in that's optional i already put in olive oil so the butter as far as I'm concerned is not necessary also I'm not a great fan of butter and we're going to mash this until this is really more or less like a mashed potato kind of dish but you don't have to mash it too fine some people like to have like really mashed potato I like to have little chunks of carrot still in there and you know every now and then a little piece of onion so you can actually recognize what you're eating. So more or less like this, I'm going to give it a good stir and there's a real big chunk of potato or carrot, nah it also looks, looks fine. So now I'm going to make sure that the whole thing looks pretty orange and as you know orange is the national color of the Netherlands. So, uh, there she is, pretty good. We're going to just taste it a little bit. Now, I was careful with the salt, or with the bouillon. You can always make it saltier. You can't make it less salty. Mm, mm, perfect. I hit it right. So again, go careful with the um, bouillon I'd say go a little bit less than what it says on the container because people eat too salty and then um, should not be salty enough you can always add some more this is done right now with the exception of the garlic like I said earlier some people like to do this with bacon that is possible I don't like it so I'm just going to stir the roasted garlic in here right now and we're going to let this stand and cool it down 
for a little bit. Uh, it will stiffen up a little bit. If it becomes too stiff, then uh, you can always add a little bit of water. Be careful, because as you heat it up, it tends to become a little more soft again. One of my favorite side dishes is uh, collard greens. And I have a very simple recipe for that. Very easy. I'm going to um, take some, uh, half an onion actually, half a small onion. And you see I cut it sort of like, uh, well, they say it's the wrong way to cut an onion, but um, I like it this way because it's going to be far more, I find it far more tasty that way. On a low flame, sort of low to medium, I let the onions just slightly brown for two, three minutes. And then I'm going to add the collard greens, stems in very small parts first. And I did this one, I didn't cut very, very, very well, so that was, that's going to be cut differently. Uh. Okay, this is fine. Stems first, because they take the longest to cook. This is a fairly quick dish, it takes about a grand total of about 15 minutes. Easy, very healthy. I'm going to close this. And in the meantime, I'm going to cut the rest of my greens. I've cut the rest of my greens and they're thoroughly washed. And with just the water that's still on there, I'm going to add that to the pan. Let's see how much I can put in there. Oh, it actually all fits. I pack it in a little bit. I put the lid back on and I let it come to sort of like a steam until the steam comes to the lid. You can already see that the greens are gone down considerably. I'm going to stir them around a little bit and you'll see that at this point it will become just the bottom of greens. But it's fairly dense at that point. Now this is a little, little drier than I'd like it to be so I'm going to add just a little bit of water. I have a third of a cup of water I'm going to put about half of that, so a sixth of a cup of water in there. You can always add more. You don't want this to be too wet. At this point, I'm going to add a couple of things. I noticed that I had a tomato that was uh, very ripe, uh, but fine. I always keep my tomatoes outside, by the way, I don't, um, outside of the fridge, uh, that is to say. I don't ever put them in the fridge because tomatoes tend to be way too green or way too raw here unripe I should say not raw unripe and uh, I always keep them in a dark spot where over the course of about a week they become really intense red and far more flavorful so I have one of those that started to dry and I don't want to dry tomato so I'm simply going to add it to my dish then the other things that I'm going to add here is some finely chopped garlic. I have a little bit of curry powder. Now that is, um, it's not going to taste like curry. It is so little, it's about a teaspoon and a teaspoon uh, of bouillon powder, mushroom powder. Mushroom bouillon, I should say. And uh, I'm going to stir that. Instead of the bouillon po powder, you can also simply use Salt is fine too. And now the real piece that makes it taste really good is some fresh nutmeg. I have one of those nut nutmeg graters. You can buy it grated already and that's fine. Not too much because it's a very overpowering flavor. I have um, a whole bunch of nutmegs that I bought years ago. 
they really keep their flavor this way and only release it when you grate them. Mmm, that already smells very good. I'm going to add a little bit of water because it's still a little dry, so basically the entire third of a cup is in there right now. I let this come to a boil, and at that point I put it very low and let it cook for another let's say five minutes long enough for me to fry my fish sticks which is what I'm going to uh, add with them lid on top and we just add it so the greens after about five to ten minutes depends a little bit on how tough the greens are these were a little tougher so I gave them ten minutes they're done and right now they're nice and dry Again, I had them on the lowest flame possible. In the meantime, I fried up some fish sticks over there. It's Saturday, so I deserve them. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. And we're going to go and make ourselves a plate. I like small plates because the neck have two. So, we're going to put some... Uh, Cut spot, hodgepodge, I think the British call it. Although British hodgepodge is kind of different. Some greens on the side. And I'm going to take, I probably shouldn't have done that, three fish sticks. And that's it. Now, in the Netherlands, very often the hodgepodge or the hot spot is eaten with a so called klapstuk, which is uh, stewed meat. I don't really like red meat, I don't eat it very often. And uh, some people do it with mushrooms. It's a completely vegan dish if you don't make it with butter or with milk, and so are the greens. And it's very healthy, good winter food.